In this video, we want to talk about the effects of inclination of solar modules or our PV system. So, uh, what do we have? We have the sun here at the top, um, the ground, and now what we consider is that we don't place the modules just horizontal. Uh, we've talked about the solar irradiation on a, a horizontal system uh, in the previous videos. What you notice is we incline the module. So what we have is this is the module, and we have this inclination angle beta. So and. Uh, what we now have is, on the one hand, of course, if, uh, the different types of, of radiation. We have the direct radiation, direct irradiance on a clear sky day, for example. <clears throat> then, of course, there are, uh, there's the diffuse radiation coming from uh, the transmission through uh, the clouds. This diffuse irradiance without any orientation. That's, that's very important. So again, here, of course, this uh, diffuse radiations use this uh, dashed arrows. That's uh, without any orientation. And what we also have is, of course, a small amount of reflected radiation. So we have this uh, radiation which is reflected on the ground and might hit uh, our modules. So uh, all these three types of uh, direct irradiance, diffuse irradiance, and reflected irradiance contributes to the irradiance uh, we get on our solar modules. And the idea of inclining modules is to increase the energy we can get from the sun. So if you look at this uh, diagram, what you see here is the situation for uh, Central Europe. So that's the increase of the irradiance um, due to the inclination of modules. You see here the different colors uh, represent different increases or different decreases of the irradiance. On the x-axis, you see the orientation of our system, so 180 degrees uh, to the south, uh, eastern, and 270 degrees western orientation of our uh, system. And we have the inclination angle starting from zero going up to 90 degrees. So uh, what does it mean? 90 degrees, of course, would be uh, something like this. So that is our module, which might be mounted at a wall, for example. And 30 degrees, for example, because this is 90 degrees, and uh, that's our module. So that might be 30 degrees uh, inclination angle, and then the orientation, of course. Uh, again, we have here north, south, east, and west, and of course, this is our orientation angle uh, starting from north, so 0 degrees and 180 degrees. And what you can see on this diagram now is, on the one hand, what is the situation uh, if the modules are just placed on the ground? So that's this situation here, of course. Uh, it doesn't matter what's, what, what the orientation is. Uh, this is the value of 100%. So that's our reference value. Um, and now what's happening if we incline our module? So let's first think about a system with an orientation of 180 degrees, so onto the south, and an inclination angle of 30 degrees. Um, so what do we do is in this case, uh, we go upwards here and reach this point. That's 30 degrees. And we are getting in this light green region. And this represents 
So this gives us 110%. So this means that over one year of uh, uh, consideration, uh, this inclined system can, gets 10% more radiation or solar energy compared to a system which is placed uh, right on the ground. So that's this um, this factor here at the, at the top. On the other hand, what, what's happening if we have a system which might be um, oriented to the east, to the east, so 90 degrees, and let's keep this inclination angle to 30 degrees. So we are somewhere here going upwards to 30 degrees and we are here. And then you see we are in this green, darker green region that is 95%. So this means that compared to a system or to uh, energy data we get for a location uh, in Central Europe, um, for the horizontal plane, we lose 5%. So the uranium is just 95% compared to the reference value of 100%. So this is the reference value based on different uh, measurement systems, weather stations, satellite data, etc. Um, and with the orientation to the east, 90, 30 degrees inclination angle, we uh, have just 95% of this reference value of solar energy. And final example, um, if you have a look at a system which has an orientation to the south, but 90 degrees uh, inclination angle, so final example, orientation again to the south, but an inclination angle 90 degrees. So that's this situation. Let's draw this in, in red. So we are somewhere here. So that's the situation I just mentioned here. That's the situation with this module and this uh, feature uh, of 90 degrees. That gives us a, a factor of this blue region uh, somewhere here. It's 80% or 75, somewhere here. So it's about 80%. So Although the system is oriented to the south, uh, we have uh, this uh, system mounted at a wall of a house or building, and then we get just 80% of the radiation compared uh, to the reference value if the system is mounted uh, on the ground so horizontally. So this diagram here is just valid for Central Europe or uh, for our systems on a similar um, latitude in the northern hemisphere. Uh, if you have a different location of your system, like closer to the equator in Egypt, for example, this uh, type or this diagram changes slightly. The values change. Um, the closer you get to the equator, the flatter these curves will be. And of course, uh, the better it is to just incline your module with the small angles. So again, uh, you have to check your location where your system uh, will be installed or is installed, uh, and then check what is what are these factors here on the right hand side at your location uh, due to the different positions of the sun, the pathways of the sun. We've seen this in a previous video um, to decide what is the the optimal inclination angle to get the maximum energy uh, from your system. And finally, uh, what we'll have a look at is what is happening if we take a look at systems which are tracking the sun. So you see here on the left hand side, that is a two axis uh, tracking system. And on the right hand side, that's just fixed ground mounted system. So what is the difference of, of these systems? Uh, the system here on the left hand side, you see here, um, this is able to, to track the sun. It's uh, driven by a motor. Um, you know the position of the sun or the movement, the pathway of the sun at the sky. And then the system can track the sun on 
two axes, so it can change the orientation angle and the inclination angle. So it is always perpendicular to the radiation of the sun. On the right-hand side, of course, this is fixed. The modules cannot change the orientation or inclination. And the question is now, what, you know, how do the, uh, how does the radiation look like in these two systems? So um, let's have a look at a, on the one on the clear sky day. We have here our time. Uh, the, this is uh, the irradiance. So let's say this is uh, 12 o'clock, uh, this is uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, and here we have 6 p.m. And if you have a look at this uh, two-axis tracking system, um, how does it look like? Of course, in the morning it's oriented to the east, so it's very fast increase of the irradiance. Uh, then the system tracks the sun, so the curve flattens, and then in the evening it Drops or something like this. That's the situation for this uh, uh, tracking system. The, the tracking system. On the other hand, what's what's happening? Uh, what the case for the fixed ground mounted system? Of course, in the morning, uh, when the sun rises in the east, then the sunrise increases. We get this type of curve. Of course, the maximum value uh, is similar uh, at noon, and then it drops, and then we get something like, like this. So this is this fixed system. So you see the difference uh, on a clear sky day. Um, on a heavy cloudy day, of course, there's no difference, because the, the advantage um, of these uh, systems is uh, that they, the tracking systems can collect the direct irradiance. So irradiance. So what we have is here again 6, 12, and 18, or 6 p.m. So on a cloudy day, what you get is uh, for the tracking system something like this with a lot of um, diffuse radiation, just a small amount of direct radiation. Of course, this. Uh, looks similar for this uh, fixed system because we just have uh, diffuse radiation or mainly uh, diffuse radiation and of course in this case there is no difference in the irradiance because um, the diffuse radiation has no orientation um, that's the difference compared to the uh, uh, direct radiation situation you see here on the left hand side. Finally, what we want to compare is the energy generation of these two systems, this uh, two axis tracking system and the fixed ground mounted system. Um, if you compare the energy generation in one year uh, of this uh, two axis tracking system, tracking system for um, the location in Central Europe, for example, it's a plus 30 up to 40% compared to this uh, fixed ground monster system. So in one year, uh, the two axis tracking system generates 30% more electricity than this ground mounted system um, due to this situation on um, good weather conditions, clear sky days, this tracking system uh, produces a lot of more, a large amount of energy compared to the fixed system. But on the other hand, the installation cost, the investment costs, and of course the running costs for operation and maintenance of these systems, because you have a lot of technical parts, of moving parts, uh, you have to uh, check to maintenance, um, are of course significantly higher compared to this ground mounted system. And these costs are uh, so the O and M costs, operation and maintenance costs for these two axis uh, two axis tracking systems is again plus let's say 20 up to 30 percent. So overall, um, from the economic point of view, there is no direct advantage of these tracking systems. So that's the reason why mainly these ground mounted systems are used 
globally they are rather cheap they are easy to install the maintenance costs are rather small um, and uh, they produce a sufficient amount of energy um, perhaps in future this tracking systems might be getting more interested interesting because you see here this flat curve of energy production uh, over the day not this peak at noon uh, so in future to stabilize the electric grid it might be very interesting to, to install these tracking systems but at the moment from the economic point of view typically it makes more sense to install fixed ground mounted systems <laughs>